In this video, we are going to see how to do a database migrate in SP.NET Core 6. The idea of database migrate is that it allows us to do the migrations of Entity Framework Core from our C Sharp code. The advantages of this technique are it is really, really simple to implement. It is only three lines of code. The second advantage is that you will never forget to apply the migrations in the case that you have a manual deployment process because the migrations will be applied automatically. Also, you have the advantage that the application will always be executed after applying the migrations. The disadvantages of this technique are while the migrations are being applied, the application will not respond. That is, the first execution of the application is a little bit slow. Subsequent executions or requests will not be that slow. You run the risk of a connection timeout. If there are too many migrations to apply, then a connection timeout may happen. If there is an error in any of the migrations, your app will not even load, which can be tedious to debug in production. Another thing is that this method may not be apt to web farms. That is, if you have several instances of your app running in a simultaneous manner, there could be an error if two instances try to execute the migrations in parallel. Another important point is that there are alternatives to this method that does not exhibit these problems. Whether you use migration bundles or a SQL script, these methods in general have less issues compared to database migrate. I see database migrate as being useful for simple applications. Simple applications which will not have several instances running at the same time. So let's learn how to apply the migrations using database migrate because I believe there is an important lesson regarding resolving scope services in the program class. So let's go to Visual Studio to see this. We are here in Visual Studio and we are in an SP.NET Core MVC application which has already been configured with Entity Framework Core. We have the Nugget packages installed, we have a class that will serve as an entity. We have an application DB contest, which is a class that will inherit from DB contest. And we have our class being configured as an entity. And I also created a migration. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to apply the migrations. For that, we could use the update database command, but we are going to use database migrate just to learn how to do it. The moment to do the migrate is after having configured the services. The services are being configured here. So after this build that we have here is the best moment, is the best place to do the database migrate. So what we're going to do is that we're going to say using bar scope equal to app services create a scope. What is this create a scope that we have here? Let's remember that the application DB contest service is configured as scoped, which means that the lifetime of this service is scoped within an HTTP context. Nevertheless, when we are running this part of the application, we are not inside such a context. We are in the configuration phase of our application. So we see ourselves in the need to create manually a scope, a scope in which our scoped service will live. This technique is really important because otherwise we would have a scope service living inside of a singleton, which would make our scope service live forever, which is a memory leak, and we cannot have that. So by creating a scope, we can make sure that our scope service will be disposed after we leave this context that we have here. So let me say here, application DB context equal to a scope service provider get required service application DB context. And then we're going to say application DB context database migrate. And this is the database migrate method that I was mentioning you. This one is going to execute the pending migrations on our database. So we can test our application. Let me go to SQL Server Object Explorer and we're going to see that we don't have any databases here. 
So let me run my application console F5 and you're going to see that automatically this method will be run and the migrations will be applied which will create our database in the server. Here we have our application but that is not what we want to see. What we want to see is that the database has been created because the migrations were applied and as you can see here we have migrate example and we have our table here. So that means that with database migrate we were able to run our migrations from our C# -sharp code. Again, this may be useful for simple applications in which you want to make sure that you don't forget to run the migrations because you have a manually configured deployment process. If you have an automated process using DevOps, for example, using Azure DevOps, then I encourage you to use migration bundles. You can see my video about migration bundles here in this channel. Thank you.